So when you look at this uh, first part of the chapter, you will realize that it is about the syllabus, the cover, the front cover, followed by those subtopics in each paper. So paper one, seven subtopics, quite a lot. And then the rest, you can see less, less subtopics. Okay. So the structures of the paper. And again, which paper are you taking for your coming May, June exam? Um, pure maths one and statistics. Statistics, okay. So we have to go through these two before May, right? Yes. So paper one and paper four. Okay, no problem for this. Then, uh, okay. So as you can see, paper one, it takes two hours, six to eight questions. And when they say six to eight questions, you should expect each chapter to have one question. And certain, yeah, then certain chapter may have two questions. Depends on how many questions they ask. So it's not fixed. Uh, so it's around that. So likewise, paper four, you can see paper four is a uh, is taking a shorter duration, one hour and thirty minutes, five to seven questions. But if you look at the number of chapters, there are only five chapters. Okay, so it means uh, certain chapters will ask two questions. Okay, and uh, in terms of marks, also you can see the difference. This is seventy five marks. This is fifty marks. Now, uh, let's move on. Okay, so this is the starting of the first chapter, 1.1, Roots of Polynomial Equations. Okay, so uh, we, we learned about the root long time ago. So for example, in a quadratic equation, yeah, x squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. This is a quadratic equation. So the roots, the roots are alpha and beta. Okay. In general, okay. roots are alpha and beta. So we call this uh, the roots of the quadratic equation. And you can always put the roots back to x. You can put alpha and alpha here. You can also put beta and beta over here. So uh, something which is common here is when you add up the root, alpha plus beta will get negative b. Okay. Negative b, yeah, which is this part. Uh, this is something that we learned before also, sum of roots. So we call it sum of roots equal to negative b. So in a more general situation, if let's say I have ax, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. So in this case, the alpha plus beta is going to be minus b over a. Minus b over a. So we have to divide by a. And as you can see here, this is alpha multiplied with beta. We call it product of root, so it's equal to C. For our more general case here, alpha beta is equal to C over A. So this is the relationship between the roots and the coefficients in the equations. Okay. Now it comes to the higher power, cubic equation. For cubic equation, x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equal to zero. If we are going to add up alpha, beta, and gamma, so then it is equal to minus b. So it seems like same situation with this, huh? minus b. Okay. You add up the roots one by one, then you will get minus b. Uh, likewise, in the more general situation, a x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equal to zero, then alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to minus b over a. Okay. Then the second situation is, it seems like equivalent to this. This is where we take two roots and multiply, then you get c. And for our case here, you take you know, we have three roots now. You take any two of them, alpha with beta, alpha with gamma, beta with gamma, you take any two of them and multiply, then add them up, 
then you will get C. Okay. Yeah, so this is the multiplication of any two roots and then add up the product. So likewise, in a more general situation, alpha, beta, alpha, gamma, and beta, gamma, when you add them up, you will get C over A. C over A. Yeah. And finally, we have this situation. We take three root, three of them, or all of them, multiply, then you will get negative D. So in a more general situation, alpha, beta, gamma is equal to negative D over A. So there is a certain trend here, actually. You can see they are like changing in sign, minus, plus, minus. Changing in sign is the other thing. Huh? Likewise here also, minus, plus. Okay. Now uh, let's see number, number three, quartic equation. Quartic equation is basically equation with degree four. Degree four. And because of that, it has four roots, alpha, beta, gamma, and theta. So we have four roots. So if you add them up one by one, then again, is there's a trend equal to negative B. So likewise, if we have a more general situation like this, Then if you add up four of the roots one by one, like this, then it is equal to negative B over A. Negative B over A. Yeah? Okay. Then again, if you see, if we take any two roots, alpha, beta, alpha, gamma, alpha, theta, beta, gamma, beta, theta, and gamma, theta. You know, we combine any two roots and then we add them up add up the, the product, then you will get uh, C. For our case here, C over A. And if you take any three roots and multiply them, and then you add up the product, you will get minus D. For this case, minus D over A. And if you take four roots and add up, then you will get E. So for this case, E over A. So you should see the trend. First, the change in sign, minus, plus, minus, plus. Second, uh, the, the thing is, you take the coefficient one by one, B, C, D, E. And then uh, you, you have another trend also, one root, this one, two roots multiply and add up, three roots multiply and add up, and then four roots multiply. So that's the thing, the theory. This is the very first part of the theory. So we have done, and this is the, the summary. So take one root and add up, take two roots, multiply and add up, take three roots, multiply and add up, and take four roots, multiply and add up. Okay, so now let's see the application. Find an equation through algebraic manipulation. Okay, so uh, let's see what, what it means by algebraic manipulation over here. Okay. Okay. So uh, we see this example. x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Okay, so when you see this question, first they say it has roots alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, three roots. Uh, it's very normal, cubic equation, three roots. Quartic equation, four roots. Quadratic equation, two roots. It's very normal to be like this. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do now is, let's say, find equation with roots, alpha minus one, beta minus one, and gamma minus one. So they want us to find something like this. Yep. So what are we going to do here? First, if we make use of what we learn, then we have to know that alpha plus beta plus gamma is actually equal to minus b. So for our case here, this is b, this is c, this is d. Yeah? For our case here, minus 3. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to 
minus 3. So based on what we learned just now. Okay, so it's supposed to equal to minus 3. And after that, the next thing is, we also know that alpha beta, alpha gamma, and beta gamma is equal to C, which is negative 2. Okay, equal to negative 2. Huh? And after that, the next one is, if we take three roots and multiply alpha, beta, and gamma, it is equal to negative d, which is negative 5 here. Okay, negative 5. Huh? So from here, we have to make use of these three information to, to answer the questions. Okay, so in order to do so, first, what we need to know is now we have a new set of roots. Alpha minus one, beta minus one, and gamma minus one. So we have the new set of roots. And what to do with this is we need to add them up one by one, like here, like the first stage. Okay, so our new root, alpha minus one, beta minus one, gamma minus one. So we have to add them up one by one, like this. Okay. So if I add, add them up one by one, what am I going to get here? So of course, this is going to be alpha plus beta plus gamma minus three. Oh, okay. And we substitute minus, we substitute this result, uh, I mean this result, into, yeah. Okay. Replace the alpha, beta, and gamma with minus 3. So we get minus 3, and then this minus 3 again, so we get minus 6. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. Now, the second thing is, we follow what we did here. We take any two roots and multiply. Okay, any two roots and multiply. Huh? For our case here, I'm going to take alpha minus one, beta minus one, then alpha minus one, gamma minus one. Uh, what we mean, what I mean by any two roots. Uh, then beta minus one, gamma minus one. So I take any two roots and multiply. So after doing so, uh, what happened then is we have to simplify them. Okay, simplify this. Huh? So in order to simplify this, so we need to expand it. Alpha, beta, minus alpha, minus beta. Okay, so I straight away do like this. And then plus one. So likewise, alpha, gamma, minus minus alpha minus gamma, I straight away factorize the negative plus one. And then expand again, beta gamma minus beta minus gamma, factorize the negative minus beta minus gamma plus one. Okay. So after expanding, I get something like this. And let's say now I purposely gathering up this this and this and put them together so that I can change it to negative 2 as you can see here. Okay, so alpha beta, alpha gamma, beta gamma. So I put this in the first part of everything. Then after that, followed by all this. Uh, this this should be plus, huh? This should be plus. Okay, so I take out the negative. So I have alpha beta, alpha plus beta. I have alpha plus gamma. I have beta plus gamma. Okay, so I have something like this, followed by number. Number I have one, one and one. So all together three. Okay. So uh, let's simplify this a little bit first. For the first three term, I just leave it like this. 
And for this, I realized that I have two alpha, I have two beta, I have two gamma. So I can just factorize the two and end up, end up with alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. Yeah. So, of course, what happened here is I purposely put this form here so that I can replace with minus three. Replace with minus three. Okay. This part I replace with minus two. So replace with minus two, followed by this negative two from the question itself, and I mean from the working, and then from uh, plus three. So I managed to get something like this. Then I just press calculator to count this. Then I get seven. Seven. And after that, finally, we are going to make use of this concept. We take any three roots and multiply, then we are going to get this. We take three of the roots, multiply, we get this. And let's say I expand the two bracket first. So I'm going to get alpha beta minus alpha minus beta plus one, gamma minus one. Okay. Then I expand again. So I will get alpha beta gamma minus alpha beta alpha, gamma, beta, gamma, okay, let's say I do one by one first, uh, alpha, this with this, this with this, alpha, gamma, minus alpha first, okay, minus alpha, beta, gamma, Positive alpha, positive alpha, positive beta, then gamma, then minus one. Okay, so we get something like this. And we have, let's say I purposely gather up in this way. For those in double, I take out the negative alpha, beta, alpha, gamma, beta, gamma. I take out the negative huh? yep. and then follow by number minus okay. uh, sorry one more single root single root we have alpha in positive positive sign alpha beta gamma so in positive sign followed by minus one okay. so it seems like we can make use of our previous result also Alpha, beta, gamma, yeah, negative five. This one, two of the roots multiply, negative two. And followed by single root, negative three. Then minus one. Okay, then we can just count all these minus 5 plus 2 minus 3 minus 1 so we get negative 7 negative 7 okay so you have done the three stages here so we have to know that this is negative b this is c this is negative d so we need to find the equation. If you can see the question here, find the equation. So we need to know that our equation is taking a cubic equation because three roots are there. So cubic equation in general, x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equal to zero. So this is cubic equation. So from here, we know that our B is actually, you see negative B equal to negative six, right? So B is actually six. C is seven. And here, 
negative d equal to negative 7, d is 7. So we have our BCD now. And we substitute into the equation here. Then we will get the equation. x cubed, b equal to 6, 6x six squared, and then c equal to 7. So we have 7x, and then d equal to 7 equal to zero okay so this is the equation okay. so the whole process is going to be like this okay so uh, any question or not so far until here um, no sir no question no question huh? okay so uh, we have done for the first i mean this is our very first questions which make use of this concept okay this concept huh? so we have done this part and now, uh, just for your information, this is basic concept. And in exam, at most of the time, we have to use a shortcut to do it. Okay? So basic concept is like this, but shortcut is preferred. So let's see what, what I mean by shortcut. Okay, so let's skip a few pages and go straight to this part first okay substitutions this is the shortcut that i mean substitution so substitution is used to find equations whose roots have been raised by a power or undergone common algebraic manipulations so that means, uh, you know, your roots is alpha, beta, and gamma. So if you have a case where the new roots are taking a, the same power, so for example, alpha square, beta square, gamma square, they take same power. Or for example, also uh, alpha cube, beta cube, and gamma cube, which means they are taking same power as well. So in in that case, we can use substitution method to handle it okay. and likewise if they are undergoing common algebraic manipulations for example alpha minus one beta minus one <coughs> and gamma minus one so each of the roots minus one okay. so in that case we can use substitution so substitution will make the uh, working much more shorter and easier so you can see here the same question again and this question can be solved by using substitution method also which means if you see all of them minus one you need to know the alpha beta gamma they are actually x x is the root oh. so you can change it to x minus one that's why the substitution is let y equal to x minus 1. OK, so uh, let's take a look. Huh? Let's see how we do x minus 1. Okay, So I'm going to do it at the side here, or maybe at the bottom here. Okay, so let's see. Huh? For the same question again, if I'm going to use substitution method, huh? first, let y equal to x minus 1. Then we arrange x equal to y plus 1 and we substitute into the cubic equation okay so wherever you see x you replace it with y plus 1 so that's why the first the first term y plus 1 cube So followed by positive 3, and then followed by x again. So wherever we see x, we replace it with y plus 1, followed by 2. And now we see x again, we replace it with y plus 1, and plus 5, then equal to 0. So we get this. And what we need to do here is we just need to expand 
Okay, expand it. So we expand it, and then we will get a. Uh, we sim we expand, we simplify it, then we will get an equation, and that equation will be the answer. Okay, so let's expand this. So expanding this, um, I just write down a formula. A plus B to the power of three, right? So yeah. A U three A square B three A B square and then B cube. So this is the expansion huh? in binomial expansion. We learned that. So I use it Y cube. Three Y square one. I'm not going to write the one and then three Y one square. One square, no need. So one square is just one. So three y followed by b cube. B cube is one cube. One cube is just one. Okay. So followed by this y square plus two y plus one. Then I times three at the same time. Ah, three y square plus six y plus three. Followed by this minus two y minus two plus 5 equal to 0. So y cube 6y square 9y 7y and followed by number 1 plus 3 4 2 7. Okay, so we get the equation and of course, if you compare with the previous one, you can remember the coefficient 1677. Seven, uh. yeah. 1677. Seven. So same, 1677. Seven. It's just that it's in y, you know, y cubed plus 6y squared plus 7y plus 7. It doesn't really matter. Man. It's oh. fine to take it in that form. Okay, so it is acceptable. So what we found is this is quite a lot to do. And that substitution method is short. See, it just take a few lines, we finish up everything. Uh, so that's the thing, a shortcut. So this method is very popular in exam. And let's see here, concept. As long as the new roots have the same algebraic manipulation, it can be solved by using substitution. That means if you have alpha minus 1, beta minus 2, gamma minus 3, then you cannot use substitution anymore. Oh, okay. If the number are different, the number must be the same in order to use substitution. Okay. So if the number are different, let's say minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, then you have to use back our first method just now. Okay? You have to use back that method or else uh, if they have the same number that uh, subtracting from alpha, beta and gamma, so we can use substitutions. Must be the same algebraic manipulation. And number three, notice that substitution will not be given for the easiest easiest cases. So that means for example this question, they won't tell you, they won't tell you you have to use y equal to x minus 1. You have to determine on your own. Oh, okay. You have to determine on your own. Huh? So example, where the new roots are reciprocal. So let's say for example, uh, reciprocal means if the new roots are like 1 over alpha, 1 over beta, 1 over gamma. And then you have to set up substitution like y equal to 1 over x square. For example, alpha square, beta square, gamma square. And then you have to set up your substitution y equal to x square. Oh, okay. Uh, simple linear function. Simple linear function, let's say if your, your root is uh, let's say 2 alpha plus 3, 2 beta plus 3, 2 gamma plus 3. And then you set up your substitution, y equal to 2x plus 3. So you have to set up substitution on your own. So based on how the roots look like, then you just set up accordingly. Okay. So
So that is the, the idea. And now, okay, it's your, it's, it's your turn to try it out. Okay. Uh, I, I hope you can make this. This one, if you can't do it, we can still discuss through, but let's try this first. The okay. two. So you have to try it. That when you have done, you let me know. You send me the WhatsApp. Send me through WhatsApp. Okay. So I will wait for you to work it out.
Um, sir, so I'm not sure how they got the answer. I got y cubed plus 9y minus 1, but I, it's not the oh, okay. answer. So do you want me to show working straight away or do you want me to look at your working first? Um, any, anything, sir. Okay, uh, then maybe you can just send me your working. I see what mistake you, you make there. Okay. x equal to cube root of y, this is correct. Substitute. Substitution, correct. Okay. So, I just discussed with you uh, how to handle all this. Still working here. Okay, so the problem is this part. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this one correct, this one correct. Uh, this one something wrong already. And hence the answer is not correct. Okay, you see how we handle it. So it is true to have y plus 3 cube roots of y minus 1 equal to 0. It's, it's true to have this. Okay, it's correct, uh, which means it's correct to have this. The thing is, if you cube everything, uh, then it should, it should end up with a very complicated expansion, which is something like a plus b cube you know the one that i wrote down just now you expand it it will be a cube plus 3a square b plus 3a b cube plus b cube if you expand it in this way it's supposed to have expansion in that way and of course what i see here is at one side of the equation. Uh, are, you, are you still able to hear me? Yes, sir, I can. Uh, okay. So you make this alone on one side of the equation and then you bring the rest to the other side. So the difference is when you do so and you cube everything, I mean you cube left hand side and you cube right hand side, it will be much more easier. The reason is uh, you cube three terms, right? The expansion is very complicated. But if you cube one term here, it will be very simple. So you just cube this and get 27. You cube this, you get y. Oh, okay. And if you cube this, this is just two term. Two term is not too hard to deal with. You just stick to this formula. So one cube plus three one square followed by negative y. Three times one followed by negative y. Oh, sorry, this should be square. And if y is square.
27 y <laughs> 1 minus 3 y 3 y square y cube then if I simplify this y cube 27 plus 3 30y okay. uh, the power 2 first minus 3y square 30y minus 1 equal to 0 then we get uh, we get what we supposed to show uh, which is this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we get it and the next part they expect us to find something like this so I hold this part first. I will come back to this after a while. And let's learn another technique, which will uh, making us able to handle a question like this. So that is another technique. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is the, the next part that we need to go through and we will get some new techniques from here. Okay, so, uh, so let's see. Huh? The, the third techniques, recurrence relation may be considered. So maybe you're wondering recurrence relation. What is that? So recurrence relation is where you can see S, N, S, 1, S, 2, and so on. So all these are recurrence relation. And what is S, N, S, 1, S, 2? So of course, they are the, the sum of roots. Sum of root, huh? okay. So uh, with power, sum of root with power. So for example, this one is alpha n, beta n, gamma n. And for example, this is in general. Uh, no? So it depends on the equation and the roots. For example, if, if the, the equation is cubic equation, uh, so should have another theta that come afterwards. Oh, okay. uh, if quadratic, then alpha, beta only. But the thing is, when we say S n, right, so it takes power n. When we say S one, it takes power one, like alpha power one, beta power one, and gamma power one. If it's S two, it takes power two, alpha square, beta square, gamma square. Okay, so these are recurrence relation. Maybe consider to find the sum of roots to a specific degree of power. So there is a power for recurrence relation. Okay, so uh, what is important here is how we use the recurrence relation. Okay, so uh, let's look at one example here. This is the very first equation, uh, the very first example that we look at recurrence relation. Huh? So I'm going to explain. And after that, uh, next time when we use recurrence relation, I will tell you how to handle it by using shortcut. Okay. okay. So first for the first time, maybe more explanation. Huh? Okay, now let's see. Huh? The equation 8x cubed plus 12x squared plus 4x minus 1 equal to 0 has root alpha, beta, gamma. Show that the equation with roots 2 alpha plus 1, 2 beta plus 1, 2 gamma plus 1 is equal to this. Okay, so this is the first part where they expect you to use substitution. Use substitution. Huh? Okay, so it's good if you can try one more time the substitution method that you learned this now. Uh, you try one more time and try to get the answer here.
Okay, let's see. Let's see how is it. Uh, y equal to 2x plus 1. Okay, that's correct. Then you rearrange y minus 1 over 2, which is also correct. Then you substitute y minus 1 q over 8, correct? Plus 12, y minus 1 square over 4. Correct. 4, y minus 1 over 2. Correct. Minus 1 equal to 0. Expand. Correct. 12 and 4. Simplify. Correct. Plus 1 minus 2, y. Correct. Simplify. Okay. Then you get this. Times 3. Correct. Times 2. Okay, then y cube minus 3 plus 2 minus y, correct? Minus 4 plus 3 minus 1, correct? Okay, so you managed to make it for this, you get 3 marks. Okay, now let's continue. Okay, our concern now is about the recurrence relation that we are talking about. Okay, now uh, let's see some example. We start from the easier one. We start from quadratic. So if, if we have a quadratic here, uh, let's say in general, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, and the roots are alpha, beta. Then uh, what happened then is for a quadratic, the S1 is alpha plus beta. The S2 is alpha square plus beta square. The S3 is alpha cubed plus beta cubed. So that is what we call recurrence relation. Okay, recurrence relation. Huh? And we have to know if it is a cubic, ax cubed plus bx squared <coughs> plus cx plus d equal to zero. Then our roots are alpha, beta, gamma. And then S1 is alpha plus beta plus gamma. S2 is alpha square, beta square, gamma square. S3 is alpha cube, beta cube, gamma cube. So that is recurrence relation. Uh, of course, I mean, this is S line. No? This is S, S1, S2, S3. Uh, to understand recurrence relation, of course, we need to take it in this way. We need to see the relationship between this S and the other S. So that is the recurrence, the actual recurrence relation. Okay, so the actual recurrence relation is the relationship between the S. The S itself is actually just the sum of root to a specific degree of power. This is S. This is S1, S2, S3, and so on. Recurrence relation is the relation between S. There are all kind of S. Okay. The relations between them is the S. Uh, one of the important relation that we must remember is the relation between S2 and S1. There is a very fixed relationship there. Okay, so let's take a look at huh? the fixed relation. Okay, let's come back to the note first. Okay, yeah. We look at this first. This one, huh? You know, this is S2 basically. 
This is S1 minus 2 alpha beta. Okay, so this is the first recurrence relation, the basic one. S2 equal to S1 power 2 minus 2 alpha beta. Okay, so in, in general, We call it S2 equal to S1 square minus 2 sum of alpha beta. Uh, so you may see some something like this. Huh? Uh, so uh, of course, these re recurrence relations, uh, we have to take it for cubic equation also. Cubic equation. Huh? Okay, so let's see. Huh? I come back to okay come back to the situation here so just now we learn the relationship between s2 and s1 is you square the s1 then you minus 2 alpha beta and then you will get s2 when it applied it to cubic equation, it works in the same way. S2 equal to S1 power 2 minus sum of alpha beta. So of course, when I write sum of alpha beta, it, it means something like this. Huh? It means something like this. It means alpha plus beta plus gamma square minus the sum of two roots, like alpha, beta, alpha, gamma, beta, gamma, times two. Oh, okay. The two here. Uh, supposed to be this one. Uh, so supposed to be this one. Huh? And uh, the good thing about this is alpha, beta, gamma, right? It's basically, you, you try to imagine uh, if, if we have uh, if we have this as our cubic equation, right? Okay, so the alpha, beta, gamma is something easy. It is just minus B over A. The alpha, beta, alpha, gamma, and beta, gamma is C over A. So we can easily find S2 if they ask for it. If they ask for S2, and then we can easily find for S2. Okay. So uh, that is one thing. The first recurrence relation. Okay. And the other thing, the second thing that we need to pay attention on is whenever we do substitution, right? like here, we do substitution, we get a new cubic equation from this cubic equation to another cubic equation. Uh, we need to know that when we have done cubic, uh, when we have done substitution, the root changes also. You see, at the beginning, the roots are alpha, beta, gamma, as you can see here. So after you do substitution, the roots become 2 alpha plus 1, 2 beta plus 1, and 2 gamma plus 1. So the root change. And because of that, we need to know that our S1 is now 2 alpha plus 1, 2 beta plus 1, 2 gamma plus 1. That is S1. And our S2 is 2 alpha plus 1 square, 2 beta plus 1 square, and 2 gamma plus 1 square. And that is S2, and so on. So of course, uh, again, we can make use of the relationship like, like this. Huh? S2 equal to S1 square minus 2 sum of alpha beta. So we can make use of this relation 
to relate this to as relation, recurrence relation. Uh, okay, so that is one thing. Uh, one more example. Like this question. Initially, we have this cubic equation. So the roots are alpha, beta, gamma. After doing substitutions, we get a new cubic equation, and then the roots are alpha cube, beta cube, gamma cube. Okay, so that's the thing. And from here, we need to know the sum of roots to a specific power is like this. Alpha cube, beta cube, gamma cube. S2 is alpha cube square, beta cube square, gamma cube square. Uh, so that is S2. If you simplify, it's actually alpha 6, beta 6, and gamma 6. Uh, so S2 is already to the power of 6. Oh, okay. Uh, so if I talk about S3. S3 is alpha cubed to the power of 3, beta cubed to the power of 3, and gamma cubed to the power of 3, which is already alpha 9, beta 9, and gamma 9. That is S3. Uh, so the thing is like that. Okay, so this is the, the second thing that we need to know. Huh? Okay, so after substitution, the S changed to this situation. Okay, so it is according to its roots. You can okay. form the, the S1, S2, S3 according to the new roots. Then the third thing. So basically there are three things on it. Okay. So the third thing is uh, we are able to form the recurrence relation based on the cubic equation. Uh, based on the cubic equation, uh, uh, what is mean by based on the cubic equation? I give you one example. Okay, so uh, make sure you 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 know uh, two two techniques uh, that we discussed so far. Uh, you see, just now I said this is the first technique. And the first technique, uh, I call this A, uh, first technique. The second technique is this one. Uh, when the root change, the S1, S2 change. This is the second technique. I call it B. B. This is also B. When the root change, the S1, S2, S3 will just change accordingly. I call this B, yeah, second technique. Now I'm going to tell you the third technique. So the third technique is going to be like this. Let's say uh, I start from basic, first, and then I tell you how we do shortcut. Okay. So you try to understand something first. For these cubic equation, the roots are alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, let me write it here. Alpha, beta, gamma. And we know the roots is basically x. So alpha is what? Alpha is x. You can put alpha here. Beta is what? Beta is x. You can put beta here. Gamma is actually what? Gamma is actually x also. So the roots are actually x. So if I put alpha inside, if x equal to alpha, right? Then I will get alpha cube, three alpha minus one equal to zero. If I put beta, then I will get beta cube, three beta minus one. If I put gamma, then I will get gamma cube, 3 gamma minus 1. So I will get something like this. 
if I put the roots into the cubic equation, I get something like this. Huh? And now let's see something. If I purposely add up the three equations, I, I add up huh? these three. So I add up alpha cube, beta cube, gamma cube. I add up these three and factorize three at the same time. And I add up these three. So I will get minus three equal to zero. Okay. So the actual recurrence relation is based on this. Oh, okay. This, huh? So you can see something. This is S3. Uh, so this is S3. This is S1. And how about this? This is just 3, right? But actually, we have to know. You see, uh, I do one more. If I have S0, right? Alpha 0, bad. Uh, no, no, not for. I should not put above of this because this is based on the new equation. Huh? Okay, so uh, I put I put here. You know S1 is alpha, beta, gamma. S2 is alpha square, beta square, gamma square. So S0 is hence alpha 0, beta 0, gamma 0, which is 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. Okay. Oh. To, to get the recurrence relation, uh, whenever we see number, you think of S0. I think of S0. Uh. So for this case, this is minus S0. And then 3 is just S0. So equal to zero. Uh, so this is the recurrence relation. And this recurrence relation, I call it C. I call it C. Huh? So the explanation is like this. The shortcut is, the shortcut is going to be like this. Whenever you have a polynomial or equation. So you think of it in this way. Eh? This is x cubed. This is x1. This is constant. Right? Constant is basically s0. Eh? So you can straight away. No need to do step by step like this anymore in future. You can straight away change it to a recurrence relation. This is s3. You see Q and S3. You see 1 and S1. You see 0 then S0. We can easily look at the cubic equation and change it to a recurrence relation. That is shortcut. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one uh, very important. Okay, very important. Huh? Okay. Uh, likewise, one more example again. Okay, I call this C. If I have this, S3, okay, let, let, me, let me rewrite again. So this is Y cube, 3Y square, 30Y minus Y0 equal to 0. So I'm going to change it to recurrence relation straight away, S3. 3s2, 30s1, s0 equal to 0. So I can get recurrence relation straight away from the equation. Okay, so that is the thing, so which is kind of helpful. Okay, so we understand recurrence relation already. Yes. Now let's see how we apply it. So three techniques. ABC. Okay. I will show you the working for these questions. 
find the value of alpha 9, beta 9, and gamma 9. Okay. So, of course, when we look at this, we think of uh, this equation. Uh. We show this equation already, and now there are something, of course, we may think of considering this, change it to recurrence relation. And now, as what we discussed in part B, right? We have to know that this one, first, we can change to recurrence relation straight away. And it looks like this. Second, we need to know S3 is actually alpha 9 plus beta 9 plus gamma 9. Okay. That's what they ask. They are looking for S3, basically. S2 is what? S2 is alpha 6 plus gamma 6 plus, sorry, plus beta 6 plus gamma 6. That is S2. S1, this one. And S0, S0 is alpha 3 to the power of 0, beta 3 to the power of 0, and gamma 3 to the power of 0, which is basically 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. So we know S0, S1, and S2 are uh, based on B. Based on B, we already know that. Okay. Now, how to find the value? First, uh, we know S, we, we try to find S1 first. So S1 is the easier, okay, S0, I should say, S0 is the easiest to find. S0, huh? okay. S0 is basically 3. It's just 3, yeah? Okay, so S1, S1 is alpha cube. Beta cube, gamma cube. So why cube? Because the roots are cube. Huh? So we just take take them and add up straight away. Take them, power one, and add up straight away. So it will add up. It, it will end up with this. And what is the value of this? Okay. So you need to know that it is actually minus b minus b this is your b b c d minus b which is minus negative three so that is three okay s1 okay then now let's find s2 so s2 is like what we discussed Alpha cube square, beta cube square, gamma cube square, end up with power 6. That is S2. And we know from, from A that we discussed just now, you know, we have A, B, C, right? So from A that we discussed just now, S2 is S1 square minus 2 sum of alpha beta in general uh, so s1 square that means this one three square two sum of alpha beta is actually c over we don't we have no a la, no? normally it's c over a right so for this case the a is one la? so i just write c straight away c 3 square minus 2 times 30, which is 9 minus 60, which is negative 51. So that is S2. Okay, so we get S2 based on the relationship in A. Then we are looking for S3. S3 is basically this one. So S3 minus 3S2 plus 30S1 minus S0 equal to 0. 
So this is the technique C that we learn. Okay, now we substitute value S3 minus 3, negative 51, 30, 3, 3, equal to 0, and then we can find S3. Okay, so let's use calculator to count all this. Then we will get 2, 4, 0. S3 equal to negative 240. So we get S3. So of course it is good to write down so that the examiner know you really understand what is S3. Yeah? So S3 is alpha 9, beta 9, and gamma 9. So like that, that is the answer. Okay, uh, so this is something which is interrelated here and there. So maybe by looking at one question, uh, maybe not that clear. Maybe, uh, okay, so let's see more. Uh, let's see more example. Now let's look at this. So you managed to show the equation already. You get the three marks. Okay, then, and you know for this equation, the roots are these. And then the S1 are like this. S1 is just power one, the roots and add up. S2 is power two, the roots and add up. And hence, Sn, Sn is power n the roots and add them up. That is Sn. Okay. Now they ask you to find S3. S3, yeah. So of course we know S3 is basically power 3 the roots and add up. So S3 is this. Okay, so that is S3. If they ask for S minus 2, that means S minus 2 is 2 alpha plus 1 minus 2, 2 beta plus 1 minus 2, and 2 gamma plus 1 minus 2. That is S negative 2. So the thing is, how to find the value? So that is our concern. Okay, they they want us to find the value. We have to use technique C straight away. Technique C. So based on technique C that I discussed with you just now, we can use shortcut to change this to a recurrence relation. So imagine that this is y cubed y minus y0 equal to 0. So always change the constant to y0 huh? so that we can build the recurrence relation uh, correctly. So y cube is S3, S1, S0 equal to 0. Uh, so this is the recurrence relation. Uh, recurrence relation. Huh? So we have to get it, and in in general, okay. That, uh, in general, it's going to be like this, huh? S n minus S n minus two. You see the relationship between three and three and one, huh? Is minus two. Okay. Then this one is n minus three, then. In general, we can put it in that way. 
So that is the relationship in general. Okay, now let's put our focus on S3. Okay. How to find S3? So we, we know that S3 is S1 plus S0. And we know S1 is this plus this plus this. The root take power one and add up. That is S1. And at the same time, S1 is basically, let's say I call this B. I'm oh, sorry. There is no B huh, for this case. As you see, this cubic equation, right? Y cube, the power two term is not there. 0y square minus y minus 1 equal to 0. So this is b, this is c, this is d, b, c, d. Yeah? We need to know that the, the sum of the roots with power 1 uh, is actually minus b. It's minus b. Yeah? So because of that, it should equal to zero. So S1 is zero. Okay. And S0, right? Imagine S0 is S0 is just two two alpha plus one power zero. Two beta plus one power zero. Two gamma plus one power zero. So it should end up with 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. And 0 is 3. And because of that, we get S3, which is equal to 3. So we get S3 already. Okay, so let me check the answer first. S3. Okay, that's correct. S3 is equal to 3. This is the correct answer. Okay, now we are looking for S minus 2. S minus 2. Huh? Okay, so how are we going to deal with this? We use our general relation. General relation. Huh? If I have minus 2, right? If I want to get minus 2, um, I sh look at my general recurrence relation. I should let N equal to I I try to avoid negative s huh? so in order to avoid that I should take n equal to one <clears throat> when I take n equal to one you see this is s one the first one this is s negative one this is s negative two so at least one of the term is not taking negative. Huh? This one choice have to take negative. So rearranging this. Okay, I get this. S1 minus S minus 1. And my S1, right? We found before S1 is 0. 0 minus S91. So I get something like this. S negative 2 that we are looking for is equal to negative S minus 1. So we need to find out this value. I let N equal to 2. So like what I said, we try to avoid negative. Huh? So when I let N equal to 2, as you see here, S2, I put 2 here. S0, I put 2 here, S minus 1. So I have a lot of positive S here, which is easier to, to handle. So I look for S minus 1. S minus 1 is S2 minus S0. Finding S0 is not a problem. We found just now S0 is 3. 
So this is 3. But S2 is not a big con big deal also because we learn in A. Eh? In A, S2 is S1 square minus 2 sum of alpha beta. That is how we find S2 is it. We know S1 is 0. From here, S1 is 0. And sum of alpha beta right, is the two roots that multiply. And it is always C. It's always C. Yeah? So this is C. 0 square minus 2, negative 1. Then you get 2. So we get S2 equal to 2. So we can always able to use concept A to find S2. Okay. And always remember this is C of the, the coefficient C in the cubic equation. So we get S2 ready. Now come back to this. S minus 1. S2 is 2. S0 is 3. Then we manage to get negative 1 as the final answer. So negative 1. So we get that and we have done the whole questions. Okay, let me double check with the answer first. For this, S minus 1 is negative 1. Let's see whether it's correct or not. negative one. Oh, oh, this is not the end. Our final part is S negative two. Let me put it back here. S negative two is negative S negative one, negative negative one, which is one. So this is the correct answer, the final answer. Okay. okay. So. Uh, that is the thing, a bit hard, too, too many relationships here and there. Okay, so okay. Uh, any question or not before we continue? Um, no, sir. No question. No question, huh? Okay, so uh, let us see one more example first. Uh, one more example, huh? Let's say this. So you look at this question. Okay. The roots of the cubic equation are alpha, beta, and gamma. Find the value of alpha square plus beta square plus gamma square. So in order to do this, uh, first, we need to understand that the B over here is actually alpha plus beta plus gamma equal to negative B. That is what we learned at the beginning of today's lessons. So alpha plus beta plus gamma equal to negative, negative 5. So hence, this is equal to 5. Okay. And from the recurrence relation that we learned, 
this is actually S1. Now alpha square plus beta square plus gamma square is actually S2. S2 is S1 square minus 2 sum of alpha beta. Okay, so we also know that sum of alpha beta is C. C, yeah, this is C. Okay, so S1 square, 5 square. 2, C is 13. So 25 minus 26, we get negative 1. So alpha square, beta square, and gamma square equal to negative 1. So it will be easier for us if we know the recurrence relationship, we can easily get the answer. Okay. That's the thing. First part. Okay. Now the second part. Find the value of alpha cube, beta cube, and gamma cube. So we may feel like this is S3. But we don't have any direct, uh, I mean, direct formula to find S3. Uh, we don't have that. Okay. So to find S3, one of the way to handle it is we make use of the recurrence relation C. The C that I you know I call it ABC just now. Huh? Okay. So this is if you still remember that this is what I call A, right? So the C is this one, you see, yeah? I look at the equation. Which is X cubed, 5X squared, 13X minus uh, 4S0. You know, whenever you see constant, you change to S0, huh? Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, X, X power 0 first. X power 0 first. Then we change to S0 afterward. X power 0. Equal to 0. Okay. Then based on what I said, recurrence relation, C. We can change this to S3. 5s2, 13s1, 4s0. We can change it to this. Okay. Then we are looking for s3 actually. We know s2 already. s2 is negative 1, s1 is 5 s0 imagine s0 is like this huh? s0 is like s0 is like alpha 0 beta 0 gamma 0 so which is 1 1 which is end up with 3 so s0 is 3 Then we get this, and to that, we just press calculator to count everything. Yeah, okay. 5 plus 13 times 5 minus 12. So we get S3 equal to negative 58. Okay, so that is what we get. Okay, so. You see, we use recurrence relations a lot in this question in order to make everything short. 